Sir! Sir! I'm here! Sir, look at the drop of phlegm falling on the table! That's where I am! Sir! You can't see me, but I can see you! Please get me out from here! I have a long story to relate! Here I am now, sir. Can you please shut that window that's letting the sunlight in? I watched you take my folks out of a spittoon, placing them on a piece of glass, staining them and holding the glass over a flame. Mm, then you poured something else on them. I was lucky to escape as I was in the drop of phlegm that spilt on the table. Be careful when handling us. We are very dangerous, so don't let us be spilt anywhere. Sir... May I take a look at my friends through this? Oh no! My poor folk! Oh, my dear friends have been stained and choked together! Sir, I have a long story to tell! Who are you really? My name is Mycobacterium tuberculosis. As you know, we cause the disease known as tuberculosis. What is the story you want to relate? And about whom? Oh, a life story! All right, tell us then, but keep it short. Mycobacterium is our family name, and there are several others who also have the same family name, but tuberculosis is our name. In fact, all our generations are called tuberculosis. Unlike human beings, we don't have to keep changing our names at different times for different reasons. What's more, even in appearance, all of us look the same. Unlike humans, we have no differences in color, in size, in caste, race or religion. Most of the time, we exist as teens. Enough! Enough of your bragging! You are relating your life story! Sorry, sir! Um, our life story goes back thousands of years from its inception. We have always been together. We are united! That makes us quite a strong tribe. We are not like those so-called human beings. We take up residence in the bodies of human beings and animals and live there happily for a long time. Really, sir, there isn't a single country in the world where we haven't gone and lived in. That's how extensively we have invaded every country in the distant past. In fact, this trend continues today. But many people don't know this and won't even believe it when told. There is no place in the world that anyone can hide from us. We lived all over the world even before recorded history. Our forefathers have unearthed evidence that we existed in the skeletons of Stone Age people and in the bodies of mummies in the pyramids of Egypt. Illness caused by <coughs> us makes people cough, get fever, <coughs> lose weight, cough, blood-stained phlegm, and even creates a loss of appetite. Those who don't take medication for this condition die. <coughs> because of our combined operation, human beings as well as hundreds of thousands of animals got sick. Many died. Because of us, there was an era when people fell ill and the lives of people in vast areas were destroyed. We had created an epidemic. Large numbers of people were forced to give up their livelihoods, abandon their villages and move to other areas.
In those days, people were terrified of us. Even today, people feel ashamed to let others know that they or even a family member has the disease. They fear they'll be treated as outcasts and ignored. <laughs> but that's not our problem. We won't worry ourselves about it. <laughs> Fortunately, we were not held responsible for all those deaths in those early days. And that's because nobody knew anything about us. We had not been discovered. In fact, the disease we caused has not even been given a name in those days. It was only recently that it was identified as tuberculosis. In very early times, when we made people sick, the heathens and the gullible attributed it to the influence of evil spirits or the curse of the gods, thereby misleading the people. These false beliefs exist in our communities even today. So, in those early days, different countries gave different reasons for the deaths caused by the disease. Even in this country, the disease was given different names, and these were consumption and Tissus, and others called it the White Plague. <laughs> that doesn't sound very nice, does it? The bad times for us started with Dr. Hippocrates. <laughs> That's the man you call the father of Western medical science. He said that the root cause of this disease had to be identified first. We got really scared, but as usual, people were not bothered. The invention of this horrible instrument called the microscope became a serious threat to us. It was invented by an early 19th century French doctor, René. He said that if tubercle was found anywhere in the body, it meant that the body was infected by tuberculosis. That was correct, because it is we who create the tubercle. Frenchman Jean-Antoine William declared that TB was an infectious disease in 1868. Fortunately for us, his theory was considered offensive and he was insulted. <laughs> Thereafter, Louis Pasteur announced to the world that disease was caused by bacteria. But sir, the 24th of March, 1882, was the saddest day in our life story. The day when German doctor Robert Koch discovered through his microscope that TB was caused by bacteria and that announcement exposed us to the whole world. He also gave us the name Mycobacterium tuberculosis. He was awarded the Nobel Prize in 1905 for this discovery. The story goes that while Robert Koch was serving as a young doctor in a rural town in Germany in 1872, his wife Amy gave him a birthday gift of a microscope. He set up a little laboratory in their home. He took great pains to research the root cause of TB. Day after day, he brought home infectious material from tuberculosis patients for examination. He gave them different stains for easy identification. He even changed his methods of research, but he could not trace us yet. We were just not able to get away from Dr. Koch. He pursued us relentlessly until finally he discovered us. Next. He started searching for drugs that would destroy us, but until he died in 1910, he was unable to achieve that. <laughs> this helped us to survive a little longer without any problems. It was during this period that the practice of isolating people who were suffering from TB began as a measure to control the spread of the disease. They were sent to special sanatoriums where they were well looked after. 
The sanatoriums were located in spacious properties, and the inmates lived in a free and relaxed atmosphere. Mm, they also had ample exposure to sunshine, which was essential to destroy TB germs. Eating nutritious food helped them to build up their resistance to the disease. And that creates a problem for our survival. Remember, sunshine does destroy us. It was in this era that a vaccine that could effectively destroy us and help the patient build up strong resistance to us was introduced. Its name was the BCG. It was discovered by two scientists, Albert Kelmet and Camille Guerin. Babies are given this vaccine soon after birth. <laughs> Ha! That vaccine can only prevent the occurrence of two serious conditions in a TB patient, and those two conditions are TB affecting the brain and TB spread to the entire body through the bloodstream. You know, you people call it TB meningitis and miliary TB, but other forms of TB can't be stopped by BCG. I hope you understand that, sir. No matter what discoveries were made, we were able to spread this disease throughout the world and cause massive destruction. Uh, the next man who posed a threat to our lives was a Russian called Selman A. Waxman. In 1944, for the first time, he discovered a drug that would destroy us. That was streptomycin. By 1953, about 20 books and over 10,000 letters had been written about streptomycin. More human lives than those that were lost in the World War were saved as a result of Waxman's discovery. Although this made him a hero among humans, we regard him as an enemy. His discovery of this wonder drug earned him a Nobel Prize in the year 1952. Oh, that's fair enough, fair enough. So, sir, you can imagine our plight during that period. Really, it was after this that our life story took a different turn and the major battle started. We are not easy givers up. Yes, there was large-scale loss of life among us. There was also a corresponding drop in the number of TB patients. Also, various people were engaged in research to find more drugs to fight TB. We did not give up our efforts either. <laughs> our tribe does not accept defeat easily. Even with defeat staring us in the face, we kept striving to win. Mm, it said that those who strive hard will be victorious. Our response was to ensure that all our new generations of bacteria were equipped to effectively counteract all the new drugs that were being found to destroy us. That, sir, turned out to be a battle royal. Yet, yet, we were always faced with the reality of certain defeat. This was due to an important discovery humans made in the late 60s of an effective method to undermine and destroy our ability to resist drugs. This new method involved a multi-drug treatment of the patient instead of the conventional single drug treatment. The multi-drug approach is the prescribed form of treatment for curing TB patients even today. <laughs> What do you mean by that? 
Sir, you have now found drugs that can destroy us and completely cure tuberculosis. Yet, how many of our TB patients follow the doctor's instructions and take their medications regularly? Some of them take only half the medicine, and that too, as and when they feel like it. Oh, that's so stupid of them, one wouldn't imagine. <laughs> and that means... When a patient takes only half the quota of drugs prescribed, all our bacteria is not destroyed. A few of us survive and will have the ability to counteract the effects of the drugs. We develop resistance to the drugs, which helps us to survive. And these survivors produce new generations of bacteria, which are also resistant to the drugs. Meaning that... These new generations of bacteria get together and produce some different type of TB to the conventional type we know. It's called multi-drug resistant or MDR TB. MDR TB is not a harmless or mild disease. It is fatal. This is what is called the resurgence of tuberculosis. In the past, people died of TB because there were no drugs to cure them. Today, with treatment available, people neglect taking their medication and expose themselves to the risk of death. <laughs> I don't understand this. <laughs> One way or the other, we too continue to survive. There, I have revealed some of our secrets also to you. Please understand, MDRTB is fatal. What's more, it thrives in the bodies of people with, with low resistance. Like what? Remember those who are HIV infected, those who are diabetics, liquor and drug addicts, malnourished people, and those who abuse the use of steroids all of these people have low resistance and we can easily win over these people. Somehow we strive to increase our numbers and lead a good life. Hey, well, there is a lot that you need to do for yourself. Very interesting. But I have no time to keep chatting. I have to go. I, I would have liked to have got some more information from you. If you wish, sir, I will remain right here until you return. <laughs> but please don't take too long. I can't remain outside for too long. The moment sunlight falls on me, I will die. All right, but don't you creep into the body of anyone who comes here and infect them. <laughs> I won't do that. <laughs> no. <laughs>